everyone. MSM and St. Mary's University welcome you to our Agent E Summit 2020 Live. We're all going through the current situation of COVID 19 pandemic, and it is not easy for us. However, we should not let it stop from enhancing our knowledge, improving our minds, and sharpening our skills and connecting with each other continuously for I would like to thank you for taking time and being there with us. Uh, with us here today. St. Mary's University is an innovative teaching and research university that provides affordable, appropriated, and highly valued degrees in the school of art, sciences, and education. I am delighted and pleased to introduce today's facilitators, Dr. Pablo Ortiz, Director of Public Affairs, St. Mary's University, and Ms. Kim Tam, Recruitment and Community Agent Officer, St. Mary's University. So what's today's agenda for the webinar? Sorry, a comprehensive first presentation on St. Mary's University by Pablo and I will run through the house requirements that are needed for today's presentation and the go-to webinar platform. There are multiple options in your control panel. Note that the webinar and your videos will be sent Any questions related to SMU, please post it in the Q&A section. The session will be conducted by Dr. Pablo Ortiz and Ms. Kim Tam. Now, over to Pablo and Kim for STMU's presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad uh, you guys can join us this uh, um, afternoon, this evening over there for you guys. It's morning for us here in Canada. Um, we're excited to provide you some information about our university. Uh, we're excited uh, uh, to keep uh, you guys engaged. Um, uh, we're excited that uh, that the issue with the COVID-19 is not stopping us from um, our recruitment strategies, is not stopping us from engaging students also, and look for ways that we can keep uh, uh, our um, recruitment going, even though we are facing hard times right now. Uh, I'm going to let uh i'm going to show you a little bit of the university uh in a video that we prepared for you guys and then uh kim tam is going to take over the presentation and she's going to let you know about uh our exciting programs that we have at the university so i'm going to show you the video in a little bit kim yes one second here St. Mary's University, a school founded in the Catholic intellectual tradition, open to all, welcoming international students from around the world. St. Mary's University is very diverse. We have students and faculty from different countries. Canada is a mosaic and St. Mary's is really in line with that. A beautiful campus overlooking one of the largest urban parks in North America. We do have Fish Creek Park. It's really beautiful, especially in the summer. With degree programs that can lead to careers in business, law, science, medicine, and teaching. St. Mary's can really personalize their application process. We have the academic advisors that you can always touch base with to talk about your needs, your concerns. Know that there are people here who are willing to help. St. Mary's makes its home in Calgary, Canada, a modern, clean, safe city of a million and a half people. An ethnically diverse city that celebrates many cultures. Whatever you are looking for in terms of culture, Calgary is very, very diverse, and you'll be able to find a community that you'll fit in with. I think for me, the benefit has been learning about other cultures. A city surrounded by natural beauty and spectacular outdoor adventure. If you really love the mountains, you get to do lots of hiking, skiing. The average class size is about 20 to 25, depending on what you're taking. You're going to have lots of engagement, not only with your professor, but also with your classmates. 
it makes it very easy for students to feel at home. It's really a community and a family. A welcoming university experience like no other. St. Mary's, discover your passion, define your success. Visit our website at www.stmu.ca. All right. Um, so I believe I am now up. Um, so my name is Kim. I am the Recruitment and Community Engagement Officer at St. Mary's, which means that I meet with new students. Um, I meet with students who want to apply and have lots of questions. Um, so I'm really the first point of contact. So if you have any questions, I hope I can answer them today. Um, I'm going to start off really quickly by telling you a bit about Canada and um, the country that our wonderful Calgary is located in. So Canada is the second largest country in the world. We have a population of approximately 37 million people. Um, to compare, the US has, I think, approximately 330 million people. So we have 10 times less the population than them in a very big country. Um, it makes for a very good population density as a result. We have a really beautiful landscape that is fit for both winter and summer activities. Um, Canadians are known for being really kind, polite, and helpful. A fun fact, if you didn't know, Drake and Justin Bieber, if you've ever listened to their music, they are Canadians. Um, now, multiculturalism is highly encouraged in Canada, and we recognize the value and dignity of all races and ethnic groups, all languages, all religions. So if international students are missing a piece of home when they're in Canada, um, there's lots of different ethnicities here, and I'm sure they'll find a community that they will fit in with. Now, contrary to popular belief, unfortunately, we don't live in igloos and ride polar bears to work, but we do have very lovely homes um, and lots of space for international students to live. Um, now, Alberta. Calgary is located inside the province of Alberta. It is home to the Rocky Mountains and the site of the ever famous Lake Louise, which you can see in the top right hand. And there's plenty of opportunities for hiking in the summer, like the wolf-shaped Pado Lake on the bottom left there. That's just one of the many ones we have. And yes, the water really is that blue when you go and, and actually see it. Um, so it's very beautiful. You can also try skiing or snowboarding at one of the resorts nearby. We've got lots of those. Um, or you could take a road trip and visit North America's biggest mall, which is in Edmonton. And I have a photo of that up on the left on the top corner. Uh, we do get our fair share of snow, but luckily Calgary gets what's called warm Chinook winds. So it melts it very, very quickly. So don't worry, even if you're a little scared of how cold it might be. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Calgary. Um, so it is home to approximately 1.3 million people. Um, it's voted, it has been voted multiple times as one of the most livable cities in North America. And recently it was fourth in the whole world, uh, beating out Toronto and Vancouver even. So we're a very, very wonderful city to live in. Um, we're a mountain high city and so the climate is very dry, but we have really mild temperatures, especially when you compare it to most of Canada. And even when it's cold, it's usually sunny. In fact, we get an average of 2,300 hours of sun every year. So it's actually, it makes it Calgary is the sunniest major city in the country. Um, but like I said, our weather can be very unpredictable. Uh, you'll find Calgary is very safe. We have a very low population density, so quality of life is really high, and housing is very abundant. Um, we also have a very reasonable cost of living in Calgary, so we don't have any provincial tax, uh, and our sales tax is very low, so if you compare 5% in Alberta 
to 12%, for example, in British Columbia, that is a really big difference in sales tax that students could be saving on when they're buying groceries or spending money on activities. Um, so something for students to keep in mind when they're trying to decide um, where they would like to go for school and the cost of living. Now I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about our university now. So we are located right in the south end of Calgary. Oh, two of my images went missing, but that's okay. Um, so we're in the south end of Calgary, right next to a very beautiful Fish Creek Park. And this is an aerial view of our entire campus. So Fish Creek Park is actually the second largest urban park in North America. So as a result, we get lots of deer and wildlife on campus. Um, now, hearing our name, St. Mary's, yes, we are a Catholic university, but we are not a Bible college. We're founded on a Catholic intellectual tradition. So that means we really want to educate students on becoming thoughtful members of society um, and to contribute back. We are open to all, so you do not have to be Catholic in order to attend or apply. We do not have programs focused on becoming a minister or anything like that. But if you are interested in religious studies, we do offer some courses surrounding that if you are interested. Now, St. Mary's has approximately um, 1,000 to 1,200 students this year. So we're one of the smaller universities in Calgary. To compare, the largest university here has over 30,000 students. And so we fit into their student population about 10 times. So as you can imagine, we are much, much smaller. Um, as a result, we also have a very close-knit campus community. Um, everyone knows everyone, so that means not only do you get to know your professors really well, you are building really good relationships and connections with your classmates, with staff, um, and that's really great for leading to references if you're looking to apply to a graduate school or a professional program like medicine or law, um, or even connections for future jobs. And that means that you actually get to participate and engage a lot more in class. Um, our class sizes are a maximum of 40, an average of 20 to 25, whereas a lecture hall could be a maximum class size of 200 or 300. And so students um, don't get to engage as much with their classmates and their professors and really get to uh, engage with that material as strongly. So, um, if you really also have no idea what to do at university, how to register, we have lots of great staff who will always know you by your name instead of a number. Um, so you can always pick up a phone and call us and someone will be there to help you. Now for programs at St. Mary's, there are um, some different types of programs that you can take. For the Bachelor of Arts, we have a three-year general studies program. Um, a four-year liberal study, so this is an interdisciplinary program, and you pick from one of 13 concentrations. So uh, we have different concentrations like sociology, business and management, um, political science. So it's really nice for students who um, like to look, study different multiple things and study different variety of things, um, but still be able to have one central focus and how did all these different interests affect one contemporary issue? We also have really wonderful English, history, psychology, and a social justice and Catholic studies programs. Um, our English is three year or four year, same with our history as well as our psychology. So social justice and Catholic studies is a four year degree only, um, but it's really nice. It just started in the fall and it's the first of its kind in Western Canada. Um, re really great for students who are looking to work in social services, human rights, those kinds of things. Now we have a Bachelor of Science in Biology. It is a four-year program and is really great because of our proximity to the Fish Creek Park. So students get to take advantage of wet labs, um, assisting professors with research and data collection of specimens out there. So yeah, really great for our bio program. Now for the, ba the Bachelor of Education, it is an after degree for two years, which means that you need to have your first degree in a Bachelor of Arts or Science, whatever you choose to study, 
before you can take this education program. Um, we do have options for students entering straight from high school. It's called single entry, um, but it is still, that means you would do your first degree with us and then your education degree with us. So that is the single entry program. Um, sorry, Pablo has said, this is not for international students, the single entry, but just wanted to let you guys know. Um, now for the transfer options, if you would like to do a degree, but we don't offer it, but you really wanna start your first year with us, a lot of our courses are transferable to other universities. So um, you can always start your first year with us. Let's say you wanna do specifically a degree in a Bachelor of Commerce. You could start your first year with us. We have the prerequisites and then you can um, switch to another university in the city or outside of the city if you wish. But we also have open studies, again, if you aren't really sure what you wanna study. Um, and then Pablo has indicated that uh, we want to really make sure you guys know that the Bachelor of Education is the after degree for international students. So that means they would be taking it for two years, um, but they're welcome to do their first three or four year degree with us. Now, um, part of your degree is um, going to be lots of liberal arts courses, and a lot of these will really develop strong skills for our graduates in these areas um, that employers are looking for. So there's lots of core interpersonal skills like communication skills, um, teamwork skills, adaptability, being able to critically think and be able to research. And so all of our programs will provide our candidates really strong skills in these areas so that no matter what career path you go into, I'm, ass I'm assuming what you s work at your first job at 18 is not going to be the same job you have at 35. So it's very important for students to have broad general skills that will be usable in any kind of career. And employers are finding them through the graduates of St. Mary's University. One thing, sorry, I'm going to go back really quickly. One thing I forgot to mention for our programs at St. Mary's is all of our four-year degree options have a capstone research project component. And so what that means is in your senior year, um, it is a one year long project that you have been working on since your third year actually and dreaming up over the last three years. Um, and it's tailored specific to students' interests, profs, will work with students so that they're not limited by certain organizations or companies, but that they're really tailored to what a student wants to work with. So for example, if you are very passionate about working with homeless populations or vulnerable populations, um, and there's a specific organization, they will make sure that you have a contact and can work with something in the area so that that way you have experience leading into your career after you graduate so that you have things on your resume to show the work that you have done. So I just wanted to mention that quickly. Um, now, part of your degree is not just academia and exams and tests, all of those things. Um, you really want to be involved in extracurricular activities as well. And there have been studies and research that show employers really value extracurricular on a, an applicant's resume. And that really shows that applicants are going above and beyond. They're very engaged. They really want to learn and try their best at everything. And so there's lots of things for students to do as part of their degree at St. Mary's. Now for athletics, we compete on a national level in cross country running, track and basketball. Um, I believe our, our women's basketball team has won over the last couple of years, gold, silver, and bronze um, over the last three or four years. So they're very, very strong. And we are always looking for um, more men for our strong basketball team as well for the men's. Now, if you want to work out between classes, after classes, included in your tuition and your fees is the fitness center. Um, so we have really great uh, personal trainers who can help students out. We also have lots of equipment. And so um, students can save on a gym cost because we have one for them at the school. 
And if they really want to participate in campus recreation, so um, that means group fitness classes so they can make some new friends. We've got yoga classes, Tabata, um, Taekwondo, high intensity workout. So they're very small and intimate, I think between four and eight people. So it's really nice because it's a cheap way for students to make new friends, but also stay healthy. So that is our athletics. For clubs, we also have lots of clubs on campus. So both academia as well as hobby or interest clubs. So for academic ones, for example, we have the Education Society, if you are an education student, the Psychology Association, um, what else? I'm trying to see. The Literary Guild, lots of our English students, um, they publish books or short stories through that. And again, I don't know many 22-year-olds that can say on their resume, I have published short stories in a book. So those opportunities are available here for students. Now for hobby clubs, we have really amazing ones like the board games club, or maybe you really like to role play and we have a really, really active Dungeons and Dragons club. Um, so we have some of those. And St. Mary's is really proud to be very focused on social justice. So that means that we partner a lot with our local charities. And a lot of our students volunteer as a result, over 50%, whether that is on campus or off, um, so some of the opportunities are the Students for Social Justice Club. They were super passionate about reducing plastic waste. So they fundraised and now we have these wonderful water, uh, water bottle filling stations and we don't sell bottled water on campus. The first university in Alberta to do so. And so we're very proud of our Students for Social Justice. We also have the president's volunteer team. So once a month, you go with the president of the university to volunteer for a local charity. And again, I don't know many universities where you can say, I went with the president, who, by the way, probably has a very big, busy schedule, but he makes that time to get to know students and build that relationship. So students, I think sometimes they get to know him by name. Um, so again, those connections are super valuable and an opportunity that maybe at another school, a larger university, you might not have these opportunities to, to build as many connections and get to know as many people this way. So intimate. Um, now for Indigenous initiatives, we have a wonderful Indigenous initiatives coordinator on campus. And uh, we often have knowledge keepers, elders on campus to share their wisdom with us or as part of our Voices series, which is open to the public and they can come and also join and learn as well. We also have um, special Indigenous peer mentoring services and a Métis graduation ceremony, which is really beautiful. And it um, is all part of St. Mary's commitment to reconciliation. So we, we are situated on Indigenous Blackfoot territory for our university. Now for travel study, this is uh, Dr. Pavel Ortiz's specialty. He works very hard. So we have several courses if you would like to travel abroad for a week or so um, and then study out there. So we have the Bamfield Marine Science Center on Vancouver Island where students can study marine biology. They get to go out to tidal pools, collect specimens, um, we have Belize in South America, where they study tropical ecology, so kind of similar, but different animals. <laughs> uh, we also have the Italy, Rome, Florence, and Assisi, where they go study art history. It's very, very beautiful, and I saw photos, looked so nice. Or maybe you want to study contemporary and Mediterranean cultures in France and Morocco. For students who are a little more adventurous and maybe want a, a semester-long um, exchange, they can do Germany, Taiwan, Ukraine, all of these different uh, countries that are listed here. Uh, so if they're looking for more than just a week to go away. And if you are interested in doing an internship, we have the Alberta Smithsonian or the Washington Center one that Dr. Ortiz is happy to help students apply for. Now, for student supports, uh, we have what's called the CLASS. It stands for Center for Learning, Access, and Student Success. 
Um, there's a variety of supports for students to take advantage of for free. So first we have the peer mentors. So peer mentors are those who have been, um, had studied a subject and did really well, and they are paid by the university to tutor students for free in whatever subject it is. Um, now, if you were the one who did really well in that subject, then that could be a job opportunity for you on campus. We also have writing labs. So under the direction of an English professor, and they can help you draft and edit your essays or your citations. We also have success strategy seminars. They are 45 minute seminars um, on different topics like career, health and wellness, mental health. Um, so students can take those and if they take enough of them, then it goes on their co-curricular record, which is a written record of all their activities at post-secondary. And again, things that they can put on their resume to show employers that they are engaged, that they are willing to try new things and that they want to learn and are eager. Um, we also have academic accommodations. So we have a wonderful coordinator. So if you are the type of student who needs extra time on a test, um, maybe you have lots of anxiety, or maybe you need special tools in order to write or study, or you have a disability, our coordinator will sit down with students to review documentation, um, to discuss their needs, and develop a plan so that they can be successful in their studies here at St. Mary's. So that is the student supports we have. Now for admissions, so this is um, admissions for international students. The usual deadline is uh, for fall is June 1st. Pablo, can you confirm if it is currently still June 1st due to the COVID situation or has it been extended? Yes, Pablo said it, ha it is still June 1st currently. Um, now the winter term, if students would like to start in January, the deadline is October 31st. Now, for the because of COVID, currently our $275 application fee when you apply, you do have to pay it, but it will be credited back as a tuition for students if they were to start in the coming September. Um, so that has been approved by our board and it's because we know that there's lots of board closures and we don't know when that's going to happen um, for visas for students so that's why it will be credited back as a tuition credit for this um, if students start in the september now moving forwards if they start after that the fee will be 175 dollars non-refundable and they'll also need to present English language proficiency results, which I'll touch base about in a minute. And any original transcripts, so your high school, if a student has done any post-secondary, those must also be translated into English. And our admissions team will assess them. And if they have not been translated, then they will need to be done so before um, you're admissible. Now, for the English language proficiency results, um, this is the list of the tests that we normally take and the grades. Um, I'm going to be talking really quickly about one of the tests we are doing just for September admission um, because of the COVID situation. So as you can see, the regular tests are TOEFL, IELTS, ME Lab, PTE, and CLB. Oh, sorry. Pablo says that this is what I was going to talk about. This will also be for the fall and winter only um, because of COVID. So if students are having trouble accessing a seat for IELTS or any of those other mentioned tests, they can go online to do the Duolingo English test. I think it costs about 50 US dollars and it's two, two hours or they can complete it in under an hour, it says right here on this screenshot. Um, and it provides results immediately, which they can send to us as uh, proof of their English language proficiency. And so they are, we are looking for a minimum score of 115. Okay. Now for tuition and fees, uh, this is the chart for our Bachelor of Arts or our Bachelor of Science programs. 
So if you are taking 10 courses, so five in the winter, five in the, in the fall, um, your annual cost that you can expect is about 24,000 Canadian dollars. Um, so if you are doing a four-year degree, you would multiply that number by four. If you're doing the three-year degree, you will multiply that number by three. Um, our Bachelor of Education has different costs. So for two years, um, this is an annual cost. So you would multiply that annual cost by two in order to get your total cost for the after degree. Um, both of these charts, by the way, uh, are not updated on our website currently, but they will be updated soon. Um, now, if you have any specific questions that you would like to email, this is my email address. So you can, if a student that you know has a specific situation, you can always send us an email and we will do our best to answer it as quick as possible. And if we don't know, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer and make sure I get back to you. Um, that is all on my end. Is there anything, Pablo, or Dr. Ortiz, sorry, if you would like to add to my presentation? Um, but other than that, any questions, Dakshita? <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. We do have a couple of questions over here. Uh, thank you, everyone. So I'll start with the questions one by one. So um, the first question is, uh, Kim, can you please repeat the B ed part, like the single entry, entry and the double entry? Yes, okay, here, I will um, go back on my slideshow here. And thank you for that question. Sorry, I was, I was a little confused on that part. So, um, thank you guys. I don't know if you're able to see my, my page is here. Are you guys able to see on my end uh, what it says right now? Yes, okay, it's perfect. Now, uh, for the Bachelor of Education, it is an after degree only for international students. Um, so that means they need to complete their first degree in the Bachelor of Arts or Science, whatever they choose. It could be biology, psychology, English, um, before they're able to do the Bachelor of Education after degree. Okay, yeah. Um, so, there is and, one and more. Dashira, Dashira, can yeah. I stress something about that? Um, yeah. It's just, um, it's just uh, uh, super important to mention that we will assess uh, every degree that they have, that they have uh, uh, previously it's... completed, every degree, every four-year degree they have. Uh, this is a great program for mature students as well uh, mm -hmm. that really want to go into teaching. Uh, we do have a very good success rate of employment. Uh, for our teachers after the program. So they uh, come to Canada, they complete the two-year degree, and, and, and honestly, it's, it's, it's almost, uh, um, we have a 97, 96% of uh, um, uh, employment rate for this program. They go and work for the Calgary Board of Education or uh, the Catholic Board of Education as well. And, 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 uh, uh, really, uh, uh, it's really focused on teaching. The students have mm -hmm. during those two years four practicums, four teaching practicums. Yes. So they go. And I believe it's 26 weeks of practicum over the two years that they get, which is quite high. So they go and work uh, uh, and do their practicums with the schools they're going to be teaching at sometimes, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. those schools like them so much that they hire them at the end or they offer them mm -hmm. a job. So it's a great opportunity for the students to complete a two-year program and fast track that uh, process of employment for sure. Um, I, I want to thank you for bringing that up, by the way, Pablo. I just want to really quickly also say our secondary program is going to be starting for the first time this September um, before we only had the elementary stream. So for those who want to teach junior high or high school, middle school, um, the, our secondary program will be starting this September. And we and still is, have seats. We still have seats for both programs, elementary and secondary. Kim? Yeah, 
Um, yeah, and I also want to say it's cohort based, so students will move through the years together. Um, so again, they're developing really close relationships with their classmates. Yeah. Okay, so the next question. Will the three years bachelor's degree be eligible to apply for the master's from Nepal? So this question is from Nepal. What will be the entry requirements if yes? For what program that she done? Yeah, so just three year bachelor's degree that we, de that we have. Uh, will the three year bachelor degree be eligible for master's? So generally, most Canadian universities will only accept four-year degrees. Um, there might be a specific program where the three-year degree is a one-off and they may accept it, but we recommend that students who are interested in pursuing master's programs, if they already have an idea of what university they are interested in studying at, um, or a specific program, then they can check out the admission requirements um, to decide then what undergrad they would need to do. But generally, most of them four-year degree. And, and we don't have a, a, a grad programs. We don't have a master's yes. program. Yes. Okay, so the next question says that, uh, will the classes be going online from September 2020 in Quebec, like the general update on COVID-19? Mm -hmm. I can, I, yeah, I can talk about that. We're still uh, preparing for three scenarios, right? Depending on what the uh, health officials uh, uh, direct us to do in the next few weeks, we're going to implement those scenarios. For now, all of our courses during um, spring and summer are completely online, are going to be delivered completely online. Uh, the students are not allowed on campus yet, and we're just waiting to hear from the health officials. Um, worst comes to worst, uh, fall semester is going to be delivered online and uh, uh but that won't stop uh um uh from um that won't stop the students from applying the students can start their program online and also um uh immigration canada has uh issue uh or has lifted the regulation for the post graduation work permit now students can complete 50 percent of their program online and then the other 50 face to face so that means that they can start the program in September and probably go for uh, one semester or one year of online, depending on the COVID, right? And then attend school and then travel to attend school, right? So uh, it's a very nice way of allowing the students to actually have that uh, requirement of, uh, um, of completing the program uh, uh, to get the post graduation work permit, right? So 50-50. So that's a great thing, I think. And Pablo, if I'm not wrong, this particular scheme by the Canadian government, it is also valid for the students who have not got the study permit yet. They can also enroll and start the classes. They can apply for a grad, uh, for a, um, they can apply for the permit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure when they apply for the permit, it depends on the country, but they will be uh, um, they will be uh, notified that they cannot travel to Canada yet, but they will be able to start their program, right? Okay, yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you so much for the information. The next, uh, the next question is about the refund. In case the student is not able to travel, so what will be our refund policy? The refund will be completely, uh, uh, um, it will be fully uh, um, uh, go back to the student again. So uh, they don't have to worry about that. So we will refund that for sure. Okay. The next question is, as academic institutions are closed, sending transcripts will be delayed. So I believe that we can get the transcripts, like the, the real, uh, the scanned copy of the real transcripts. Absolutely. And um we understand that some of the uh, closures with schools, it's a problem because they haven't completed their uh, remaining courses or they haven't gotten their remaining grades. So we are accepting the grades uh, at this point uh, uh, from grade 11. So, um, and we will uh, issue um, a conditional admission letter for that, right? And if they have already grades, whatever form they have, right? Whatever crimes kids they have, we accept the PDF form. And they will have to present the originals at the time uh, when they arrive on campus. 
Okay, so that's very simple. Like fill the application form, yeah. give us the academic documents, yeah. and then enroll for the enroll for your study permit. Once the student reaches there, you should be having the transcripts. Absolutely. And just for the agents to know that when they go to our website, it is still mentioned that uh, the documents, any transcripts or any documents that need to be assessed, they could be sent to IQAS. That's not the case. Our admissions teams are, uh, is doing uh, uh, the transcript assessment or credentials assessment in-house. So they will have a, a, a quicker turnaround for admission. Okay, that's great. The next question comes, can we apply for conditional offers? Yes, you can. Any scholarship for international student or Nepali no. student? We don't have many scholarships for international students, right? Uh, uh, but I will suggest that you go to the databases, right? Uh, uh, from universities, because some international students can apply for those funds uh, uh, and the applications are super easy, right? And some of those funds don't have to do anything with St. Mary's University, right? They are from organizations, they are from uh, uh, corporations, right? Uh, because international students cannot access to funding usually. usually. So we do have uh, an emergency bursary fund uh, for international students, um, but uh, that's for admitted international students only, right? Students who are already admitted into our programs. And this emergency fund uh, uh, or bursary, it's for uh, those students that are being affected by COVID, right? In uh, any way, shape or form. Is PGWP post-graduation work permit available after the completion of program from STMU? Again, Gachira, would you repeat that? Is PGWP post-graduate work permit available after the completion of program? Yes, we are a designated learning institution. Uh, so that's important to uh, uh, stress. We are a designated learning institution. So uh, uh, our students, our international students that graduate from our programs, they all are eligible for the post-graduation work permit, right? Okay. Uh, what is the job opportunity in Calgary or let's say after our programs? Um, I cannot speak for, uh, uh, for, for it right now because of the COVID uh, um, uh, crisis, but usually Calgary has been really, really good with international students, right? And students have not had problems after our uh, uh, graduation to access jobs, right? Whether they are in the service uh, um, uh, uh, industry, uh, in corporations, right? Oil and gas, communications, so uh, it, it depends on, on, on what area uh, uh, the students are, are, uh, um, are focusing on. But uh, we've been pretty good in Calgary to keep our employment rate uh, 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 higher than any other cities, for sure. Okay. Uh, the next question is very interesting question that will we be accepting three-year bachelor from India for the Bachelor of Education? No. It needs to be it needs to be a four year uh, uh, degree, right? And it has to be completed uh, uh, by the time of application. We have to have all that document, uh, 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 all those documentation or, or all those documents uh, uh, before application for sure. Okay. Okay. So, can you talk about the options for payment plan? Then, how one can complete the payment? I mean whosoever wants to enroll for our program. So there must be some online payment mode or something that we will definitely, you know, support Pablo, but it'll be great if you can answer. Yeah, um, usually uh, the way it works with tuition, uh, uh, we uh, request the students to pay for uh, one year tuition. That's uh, uh, the requirement for one year tuition, uh, but also we're accepting the six month tuition for one term, right? So we realize that uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, cheap to come and study to Canada. It's hard for the families, it's hard for the parents, right? Sometimes they go to a, a, a huge, uh, um, huge effort to, to provide for those funds for their kids. So, so we're accepting uh, six month tuition or one year tuition, right? It's very good to have the one year tuition paid off, 
uh, because that will really uh, boost the possibilities for getting that study permit granted right away, right? So, so uh, uh, usually uh, the tuition, it's paid uh, during the first week of classes, uh, when classes start, right? But you have the option as an international student to pay tuition at the time of the application, right? Uh, uh, or at the time of the offer, right? So, so we can issue a letter or proof that you have paid tuition and you are engaged and uh, committed to study with us, right? And that will boost the possibilities for your uh, um, study permit to be uh, uh, granted right away. Okay. Um, so, that could be done. That could be done uh, uh, through uh, wire transfer. Okay. okay. So, do we accept PTE as one of the English proficiency? Test. The PTE. Let me just, uh, Kim, would you check the list? Because I'm not sure that we accept the PTE. It's Pearson test. So uh, we do not. I mean, as per the training, we do not. It's always no. like IELTS. Uh, yeah, if it, yeah. That, that's right. The Pearson test, we don't accept the Pearson test yet. Uh, or do we? Um, I think it, we do. The PTE, 59 points on the PTE. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's fifty nine points that we accept PTE for PTE, for all the programs. For not for bachelor of education. The bachelor of education after degree only accepts the TOEFL, right? And the TOEFL it's a little bit higher there. It uh it has to be um uh it has to be higher than our regular programs, and also the bachelor of education is accepting the Cambridge exam. Uh um and the uh score for the Cambridge exam it's two hundred. Okay, okay. So Bachelor of Education has got TOEFL and Cambridge exam. The That's other right. programs have got IELTS, Duolingo, PTE. PTE, TOEFL as well, right? Uh, the most common is the IELTS, and, but uh, for now with the COVID, COVID crisis, we're accepting the uh, Duolingo and the students have to present a one, uh, 115, 115 uh, uh, points on their exam. Okay. So what is the study gap acceptable? Like the student passing from grade 12, to what extent of gap is acceptable for our degrees at SEMU? Like with justification, of course. Um, Kim, do you wanna um, um, answer a little bit on that? Um, sorry, can you maybe explain a little? I'm not too sure what you mean by your question. The study gap, the study gap that we accept, let's say the student graduated in the year oh, of okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like a study gap, we actually get lots of mature students. So we don't have a specific, like you must enter university within five years of graduating. We don't have anything like that. Um, we recognize that people have lives, right? Sometimes you have to leave to work and provide for family. Um, so we do have lots of students who may be more mature, late 20s, early 30s. Sometimes we get students in our 50s um, who at that point in time, now they're ready to take university. So. And that's true, right? We, when, when we have that, uh, that scenario with students that have graduated five years ago, 10 years ago, right? The uh, status that they have when we admit them in the university, it's a mature student, right? So, so we accept students under that status, mature student. So mm -hmm. maybe they're not mature, mature, but, but that's how we, we, we uh, uh, um, title their status, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So um, like we have discussed major questions, COVID-19 update, Duolingo, uh, gap, uh, admission requirements, IELTS requirements, other English proficiency requirements. So anything Pablo and Kim, would, would you like to, you know, say something before signing off? Kim, do you wanna uh, 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 say something? And then sure, I'll, go, I'll go first, yes. Um, so first of all, thank you guys so much for taking your time to sit through our presentation. I, I really appreciate it and I hope you're all staying safe. Um, for St. Mary's, I, I really hope students will consider St. Mary's. Um, lots of times we might think bigger means better, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, because of the small intimate environment, students can actually sometimes, um, like it fits their learning style a lot better. And because they are more engaged, 
they are participating more in discussions. Um, a lot of students, this, this, this sort of education can be even more enriching for them. So I, I hope students will consider St. Mary's University, even though we are really small, our professors are super caring, and I've been lucky enough to sit on, on some classes, and I wish I did my degree here myself. <laughs> Um, and uh, just echoing what Kim mentioned, uh, the small classes make the difference here. So the students really get to know the professors, really get to know everybody that they work with, uh, not only their classmates, but the staff members. So it's a very personalized uh, uh, service that we provide to, for them, right? Uh, uh, we didn't mention a little bit of the cafeteria, but uh, um, um, the um, the person that manages the cafeteria, the owner of the cafeteria, sometimes uh, put together meals uh, uh, that are appealing for international students. So that's important for them too, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, uh, our programs really are recognized uh, uh, through the province and through Canada. Our BEAT program is, uh, um, is considered the best program in the province. And our science program, biology, it's considered one of the best as well because of the hands-on approach to that. So uh, uh, I encourage our agents and uh, uh, the students to apply. And if they have questions, they can contact you, Dachita, for sure. You have all the information. If not, they can contact us for sure as well. Thank you so much, Pablo and Kim, for this wonderful presentation. I Thank hope you, you enjoyed our exclusive webinar of STMU. We hope this session was informative and you took some learning out of this session. In case you've missed anything during the webinar, don't worry, we shall send you a detailed email with all the details and answer all your questions. Till then, take care and stay safe. Bye. Thank you guys, bye-bye.